Hi, Mr. Hester's class. My name is Adam K. Allen, and I am the founder and CEO of Fierce Little Bird Productions. Fierce Little Bird Productions is a full-service video production company located in the Indianapolis area. I have created projects for local politicians, businesses, and nonprofit organizations with a specialty in artists and arts-based nonprofits. So I know Mr. Hester from college. We both went to Ball State University. We were both honors college students, and that's actually how we met. So this might not be <laughs> the best thing to say for a STEM class, but I hated math <laughs> when I was in school. Um, I was okay with math all the way up through, I think, freshman year, up through algebra, and then I hit geometry, and that was my first C on a report card. I was a straight-A student up until that point. Science was a different, uh, different story. I did enjoy science, um, whether it was bio or, uh, biology or physics. Uh, I really enjoyed physics, actually. Physics was a lot of fun, um, and I actually took it in high school specifically because our final project was we got to do a Rube Goldberg machine, which was really fun. Um, I actually <laughs> used a guillotine and Diet Coke and Mentos in mine, um, but it was a lot of fun. And so science was a different story. There was even a point in time where I wanted to be a paleontologist. Um, that was a long time ago. But so science, I've always kind of had a bit more of a draw to. Math, not so much. Science, yes. Honestly, when I first started getting into video production and stuff like that, it was because I loved seeing the post-production side of things and seeing all these seemingly random pieces come together to form one cohesive image um, in one solid story. And then I did some visits, I got to come up to Ball State and just and tour the facilities and everything and I fell in love with it. And as I just got more and more into the career, I just realized how much I loved doing it, how much I loved creating. Even with all the stress and headaches that can come with it, I loved, the, I loved every aspect of the field. Now my typical day honestly depends on what the project is. I might be receiving footage from something somebody else shot and I might be spending the day editing or I could be out on set moving gear around, setting up lights, setting up camera, setting up audio, getting everything ready and moving from, from shot to shot to help make sure that we get the project put together. And those days tend to be the long days. Uh, it's not uncommon for us to have 12 hour days. In some cases uh, they can go up to 18 hour days if you're, look, if you're working on a uh, a larger actual film set versus a commercial shoot. Some of the most essential skills uh, for this job, besides kind of your, your typical professional skills in regards to networking and being able to work together, include needing to understand a lot of actually really basic science things. You need to understand how a lot of audio works um, in regards to audio reverberation um, and knowing the materials in the area that you're filming in. You also need to understand basic color science um, for balancing your shots and balancing your coloring um, on set and then also getting your colors correct when you're in post and editing everything together. You need to know, uh, actually you need to know the Kelvin of lights. Um, so for example, daylight, so the sunlight is anywhere from about 5200 to 5600 Kelvin, give or take. Uh, obviously that can change depending on where you are, the surrounding area, um, temperature, honestly particulate in the air. A lot of it varies uh, based on environmental changes. Probably not a surprise, but there's a lot of tech involved in this industry. Um, obviously, besides cameras and lights and audio, you need to understand a lot of some of the basics of uh, computer science in regards to uh, software installation and operation, uh, memory storage, and uh, the various aspects within the computer you need to run your software, and also just be able to read and operate the video footage that you're importing. As I mentioned earlier, you also need a basic grasp of color temperature um, and also your, your color circle, knowing what opposites are, so blue and orange are opposites, cool colors and warm colors. You need to understand the Kelvin scale in regards to what certain lights might be. As I mentioned, daylight is anywhere from 52 to 5600 Kelvin. Tungsten lights uh, tend to be somewhere within more of the oh, 40, so kind of like 42 to 4800. Um, and LEDs can kind of be anywhere, but they tend to be, I think, within the 3800 to 4200. So we do kind of use the metric system within the film and TV industry. We need to know our lens focal lengths, um, and those are all measured in millimeters rather than, you know, inches or anything like that. So we're focusing on millimeters, whether you're using um, anything from an 18 to 35 millimeter lens, which is a variable zoom lens, or you're using uh, something for a wider shot, like a 15 millimeter. You need to know the lengths, um, and you need to understand the differences and what that does for the visual compression of the image. And so actually we know that the longer a lens is, doesn't necessarily have to be a variable zoom, but the longer a lens is, the more compressed that background is, and it actually gives the footage a more filmic, an actual like a high production value look. 
So a lot of you might be wondering, what is the average salary for this kind of, uh, this kind of job? Honestly, there's no real average salary. Part of it depends entirely upon your position. Are you an audio supervisor? Are you a director of photography? Are you a production assistant? Are you a hair and makeup artist? Are you a director, producer? Are you talent? It really depends on what you are within the job. So for me, right now, I just started my business about three years ago. Um, and last year I grossed about $40,000. Now that was fine for me in regards to what I was doing. Um, I am continuing to grow and I can tell you uh, from experience that one of my best friends who I get to work with all the time, he's been doing this about three or four years longer than I have, he last year grossed 100,000. Now within that, I know for a fact that while he grossed 100,000, his net was somewhere more in the range of about 30 to 40,000 because of all of the equipment and subcontract expenses that had to go into the business. I would say with the education you need to know, you need to know a lot of the basics of filmmaking. You need to understand what the 180 is. You need to understand um, how certain movements are. You need to understand, understand a lot of jargon that goes into this because there's a lot of jargon that gets thrown around on a set. So I would say, honestly, if you can go to a, a whether it be a four-year state school um, or even if it's a technical college that does filmmaking, that teaches filmmaking basics, um, that's kind of your base um, to understand what you need to do in this industry to properly operate. Um, past that, any certifications or hours that go into that is completely up to what you're doing. If you are wanting to be a commercial drone pilot, you do have to pass an FAA certified test to become a commercial drone pilot. You can fly a drone for fun, doesn't matter. But if you're doing it commercially, getting paid, being hired, you have to have a license. So that requires taking an FAA drone pilot license test, which is essentially studying to become an actual pilot. You need to understand cartography and FAA uh, airway regulations and things like that. I've done some narrative film shoots. So outside of the business side of things and actually doing client projects, um, probably my favorite project I've worked on was the very first film I ever wrote and directed, and I actually did it in college, but it's a film called Evergreen. It's a half hour short film, um, and it was part of a study abroad where we actually got to go to Ireland and film four short films. Uh, the one I wrote happened to be one of the ones chosen, and I got the chance to actually direct my own film. And besides just getting to travel there and experience the Irish culture and people, um, which was wonderful. I got to work with an incredible group of artists, many of which I am still very close friends with and I've worked with multiple times in multiple capacities. But that experience, that hands-on opportunity to learn and grow and try things out and again tell a story and utilizing all the skills I had learned over the, the previous few years because that was uh, the summer between my junior and senior year of college so I was getting ready to graduate soon. Um, Getting to put all of that into action was just an incredible experience um, and it's one that I cherish deeply. I think what I enjoy most about this job is honestly all the, the various people I get to meet. Um, so besides this, I'm also a professional actor. So I like to say that honestly my job is just being a storyteller. Whether I am talent on stage or on screen telling the story that somebody else has written, or if I am helping produce a story, and by story I do mean a narrative, a commercial, uh, a promotional video, a music video, what have you. Being able to help tell that story and try to tell it in a new and interesting way and understand people's backgrounds. It's probably something I love the most about this, is just getting that experience of meeting people and hearing their stories and helping them tell those stories to other people. And the fact that I get to work with a lot of my best friends it's really a plus. It makes the job a lot better, um, a lot easier, especially during long days uh, when things get really difficult and really tense. Knowing that you're working with someone that is your best friend, has your back no matter what, makes the job a lot easier and a lot more fun. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to me and uh, thank you Mr. Hesser for inviting me to participate in this. Um, I hope you all were able to take something away from what I was talking about and in some cases rambling about. Um, but I hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you want to learn a bit more about my company uh, and a bit more about what I do, feel free to visit my company website at flbproductions.com. You can also follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We also have a YouTube channel that we post all of our works on. As a side note, I hope that you realize that um, with the importance of STEM, and don't get me wrong, I completely support STEM. I think it's incredibly important that if you are someone who is looking at a STEM job, but you are also artistic, you're creative, you want to somehow try and merge the two, 
you can put a little steam into your stem. You can put a little bit of that art into that stem and make some steam. So realize that art is amazing, but it does not rely solely on itself. There's a lot of math, there's a lot of science, there's a lot of history, there's a lot of every other kind of field that goes into creating art. So uh, thank you again so much and I hope you all have a wonderful day.